Hello my soccer universe. Well, first off, I decided, yes, it would have been a week where I only went to Austria Bundesliga, but a, nothing really new happened in Austria. Uh, and second of all, a lot of interesting stuff happened in Germany that I decided, okay, I'll do now three weeks in a row Austria and Germany with actually probably more of a focus on the German Bundesliga because I think there were really quite some interesting developments there as well. Um, wearing Wolfsburg, although I'm not too happy <laughs> that they won but, uh, uh, in Frankfurt, but you know, uh, the computer spit them out as the biggest winner in the German Bundesliga. And I gotta say, you know, an away win on Kovac's return, that's a big one. But yeah, uh, going into, I mean, for, for, for me, there are a few really big storylines there. I mean, in Austria, let's uh, start quick, quick, quick there. Rapid still is an absolute cluster mess and if you want to hear my take on Rapid, I think I made two weeks ago a video on that. They thought meanwhile that they had turned the corner but they really have not. Um, we'll also talk about the last game where uh, they completely threw away a certain victory uh by just rolling it back and yeah i heard now that even the coach was upset with it but this is something that i've been observing so not to have happy but uh, yes still unbeaten but these were now twice in a row lost points against opponents where you would in both cases expect wins to be honest so uh, a little bit of a downer on last so they are way out there uh, but you know, those to me are the main points in Austria. Yes, Salzburg are now clear, three points clear, whatever, and they're gonna win it. In Germany, I think one big story is that Bayern, for the third round in a row, cannot win their game. And yes, it was maybe a little bit a weird one this time around. I mean, as we see, Union Berlin are a good opponent. I think the draw was uh, probably um, a decent result. But against Stuttgart, uh, with all the possession, all the chances, I mean, I was really, really happy about that. <laughs> I'm not going to lie about it. But it was weird um, in a way. But uh, it's also uh, the other one is, of course, we need to talk about the minus up top, which are Freiburg and Union Berlin, who are now clear on top. Freiburg uh, probably should have won the game against Gladbach in the end. But it's Union Berlin, who, yes, in Europe, they were not all that great. But I have to, have to say, in the Bundesliga, every time I see them, they look like a proper team. This looks a Champions League quality team. Absolutely. friggin -lutely. However, the biggest story is, of course, that Leipzig, after the Champions League disaster at home to Schachter, uh, fired coach Tedesco. And it's one of those firings where he had a lot of money in the bank after winning the German Cup, the first title for Leipzig, blah, blah, blah. It's almost Chelsea-esque in, in a way. And it's uh, also funny that at the same time Chelsea uh, more or less uh, fired Tuchel. So, you know, uh, <laughs> not that there were much relations there. But I really have, really, really have to, have, have to say it's, it was kind of tough. But on the other side, you saw that it was not working at Leipzig again. Again, they start a season where it's, you see the team is not clicking and they're actually looking not good. And who do, do I turn to? Well, you look at the Red Bull School and there is Marco Rose. Um, totally available and on top of that living in Leipzig. He is from Le Leipzig, although he has always said he doesn't necessarily want to coach Leipzig because, you know, he doesn't want that uh, his kids going to school, that it's very, very important how Leipzig were doing, you know, that, they, that there's the um, connection there. So in a way, yeah, uh, but he took the job. What a job he did. Uh, <laughs> they immediately looked better. And uh, for the, the other thing is he immediately has has so the first game he has is against his former employer, uh, Dort, Dortmund, that just ousted him. I think the next game is even against Gladbach. So uh, it's really, really an interesting situation. Uh, I actually think that this might work in Leipzig's favor. Um, let's wait and see. I mean, Tedesco, they also look good. But I hope that's... Uh, well, maybe I should hope for it. I, 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 I have not much love not much love for Leipzig, let's put it that way. But I really would... Uh, really curious to see whether Leipzig is a team that needs a coach fired early to get a kick up their backsides. And so, yeah. But when we walk through the games, I want to start in the Austrian Bundesliga. And the first result that we have here is already the big one. I mean, Wolfsburg, uh, who had... 
an atrocious start to the season. Although I, I, I would say they're still quality-wise a top six team in Austria. Um, looked a bit for a few minutes at Rapid and then took them apart. I mean, within 10 minutes, they could have scored three. Um, one was not given for offset, but they scored two through Baribo and Malone. Uh, it was absolute destruction of Rapid. Rapid completely fell apart. And what's even worse is that all of the latest losses of theirs, the goals were scored right in front of the ultras. Uh, which, you know, adds kind of, in, kind of insult to injury. And yeah, now it was first when they didn't qualify against Vaduz. It was that uh, all the leadership has to leave. Now they want the coach out. They're not getting at the right man. It, it should be uh, the director, sporting director. And I don't have anything personal against him, but I think that a team like Rapid with that much uh, money and that much... Um, you know, uh, clout in Austria, that they are such, that they have no plan on the sporting level, this to me speaks volumes. So yeah, uh, still a very much a hot uh, seat in Austria. Reed against Salzburg, it reads here 3-0 scoreline. However, uh, there is a little bit of a subtext to it. Uh, yes, Reed um, well down to two, uh, two, uh, two goals. 50 minutes through Sheshko and Adamo. The Sheshko goal was actually a really nice, nice one. However, they came back, had a chance, had got a penalty. That Monshein, who was at last last season, uh, missed hor horribly. And then they actually kept, kept, kept on, but they got a player sent off. So they didn't really help themselves. Uh, Salzburg also got a player sent off with Ad Adamo. So it was a very emotional goal. And Okafor makes it three. Uh, you know, maybe not what Salz 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 Salzburg needed. Tirol against Alltag, a goalless draw, which seems like a win for Alltag to, to be honest. And Lustenau against Lask. First of all, I mean, I said it already in a short shot. With it. it was a hard game to watch and not because the quality was so bad. It was it was an early afternoon kickoff. Uh, green grass. And the funny thing is in that stadium, if you look, the hills on the backside, they're all in Switzerland. This stadium is right at the border between Austria and Switzerland. Uh, that's the Rhine River in, in, in between. But um, Lusna were playing in jerseys of this color. Uh, the grass well, had a similar uh, shade. Lask playing in black, so the shadow and the black uh, stuff did not. And then the camera angle was so low. It was really, and it's always like, like especially when they play against the fan uh, stand behind the goal, you almost lose the players. I, I, I have to, as much as I really think that it's fun that Lustino is up there because uh, you know I have some good 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 memories uh, associated with with, with with the place and it's good that in Vorarlberg there's also stuff happening uh, they need to do something about the stadium CAC situation because this is it's nigh unwatchable it really was um, from what I could make out uh, it is that um, Lask actually dominated the game for a whole lot of time, should have probably scored early, earlier, uh, but Lusna could not liberate themselves. A beautifully played pass, Schul out uh, to uh, Goik Goikinger, who plays it in. Kuluris wants to uh, stop sit down, and Nakamura pulls in a 23rd minute, 1 0. But that didn't boost Lusk. Lusk let it slide, and then actually Lusna had already scored an Eagle, because unfortunately it was a clear offside. But suddenly Lusna had a few chances. And then in the second half, same thing happens. I mean, for, for 25 minutes, Lask was totally dominant. They just did. They again had a good chance that didn't go in. But then they let it slide and thought they can play it home safely. And it did not, it did not work that way. I even thought of it, but there's nothing coming from Lustenau, who actually, you know, they, they, they had their hands full with Lusk. And then they had the one attacking move, which was very similar to last ones, where um, the ball got far finds the share on the outside, who plays in. Frederikas in the 81st minute makes it 1-1. One, one. Out of nowhere. And then uh, foul show, 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 uh, on the last player, Stoika, which is, is mouthing off, gets his second yellow, is sent off. And at that moment, I'm thinking, oh, they're going to lose a game which they fortunately didn't. There were not really big chances, but I have to say uh, definitely two points lost on that one. Uh, Austria-Vienna, a big 3-0 win in Hartberg. Um, maybe they get something going. I really hope that they will do well in the Conference League. Gruber scoring a peach of a goal uh, with the goals coming through Jukic and an own goal. 
However, the beta, the big one was that uh, uh, Austria women player seems to be uh, quite injured and out. So yeah, uh, maybe a Pyrrhic big victory and then Sturm didn't see much of that one, uh, winning 2-0 in Klagenfurt. Uh, yeah, also a big result for them. So uh, if we look now at the table, Sturm is kind of closing the gap on uh, the leaders, Alaska and Salzburg. So it's 3-3-3. Three, three, three. And then there's Lucerne 3, but I have, to, I have to say it seems like the top three at the moment are really the three best teams in Aust Austria. Rapid Vienna still living off their really good start. We had the three wins in, in, in a row since then, four games winless. They are on a nose dive of the highest order and would have been already overtaken by Austria Vienna if it wasn't for the three points deduction there on the bottom you know lots of things change changing and and you know it really matters in spring uh there uh, expect final regular season standings you know it's a little bit tight in last and Sturm rapid still in there but you can see already as a clear top three it's a clear top one and then there is uh the next two and then there's more or less the rest of of the league with Ried and Alter uh, ta uh tailing off and you can see something very similar for the final regular season standings uh the next round we actually have a pretty big game yes Sturm Graz against Austria Lusna is three against four it's not Salzburg against Rapid which uh is nominally pro pro probably the one of the biggest games of the last years because those are uh you know, at least financial, financial, the top dogs. Um, Lask has to play against the Tyrol team at home, which is never an easy opponent, to be honest. Uh, but the last time they went to uh, Pushing, it was a 6-0 win. So hopefully something like that will happen as well. Because Coach Kukuwaki gave them quite an ass-kicking, I gotta say. Oops, shouldn't have said that. Um, let's go to, to, to Germany. The, uh, I didn't see Bremen Augsburg, but... Um, Augsburg took, took a lead and Bremen had the chance in stoppage time to save a penalty, uh, to uh, score a penalty goal. And that, that was saved. So it's, it's a pretty big win for Augsburg. And maybe, and I really hope not, maybe a sign for Werder going the, uh, you know, coming a little, a little bit down because uh, they have been getting more results than you would have ex expected. Stuttgart, I mean, I. Uh, in order to really appreciate this uh, re re result, you have to see that Stuttgart is a team that has been uh, pilfered in the transfer market. They absolutely they lost so many good uh, players of, of theirs, of chief, chief them, Sasha Kalajic, who again is now out with, with a big injury, which is just uh, horrible, because uh, even for the Austrian uh, national team. Uh, whereas Bayern, yes, they were rotating because of Champions League and they really thought we, we, we can win against uh, Stuttgart even with a second string team and probably they should have. Tell becomes the youngest Bundesliga scorer, gives Bayern the lead uh, in the 36-6 which was just coming. Uh, in the second half, first of all, a Giresi goal is already uh, disallowed for offside. Oh no, a foul. Uh, it, it was a foul, a foul of a Bill on Kimmich. That, uh, that, that was it. And then Fury, who had just, just come on at the halftime, uh, puts in a Mavropanos assist in the 57th. A little bit surprising, but you thought, you know, Bayern are going to shake it off. And it's exactly what it did. Masravi plays a, a ball to Muswala, who really wiggles around, pulls, puts it in the net. And then again, Bayern probably thought they can play at home and just didn't kill the game off. And yes, they didn't bring, uh, they, <laughs> I mean, they play with Asane and Mane, and those only came, came, came on a little bit later. Uh, but you know, Bayern should see this out, but then there is a penalty. Yes, uh, the Licht, and at first I thought, thought it was an, again a the Licht Hempel, but it was a foul. And Kirasi can convert the penalty in, in emphatic fashion as well. And again, uh, for Bayern, yes, if it wasn't for that win at Inter, where they really look great, the late for the, it's, I think the performances are overall all right. But the results are not coming. That usually spells trouble in Munich. Just saying. Uh, I said already on the return uh, of Kovac to Frankfurt, you know, that was the last station where he actually was really was uh, liked. And then he went to buy by Munich. He won the German Cup and, and, and so on. Wolfsburg actually went through a Lacroix goal. And I think at the first half, Frankfurt had a little bit more of the game. But Frankfurt really looked shell-shocked from the loss to uh, Sporting 
during the midweek and I'm always a little bit worried. I mean, I really like Coach Klaus and I wish him all the best, but I think at Frankfurt he still has not found the right way and that despite winning the Europa League. Uh, it, it just something doesn't quite look right. Got us with that. The Hertha Leverkusen game was a hard watch until the second half. It all came alive. First, a beautiful Demir by Free Free Then Sarda, uh, was it Sarda or Richter? I think it was a Sarda. Then equalizes short shortly after, and then I think Richter a shot from far out, equally beautiful, but Schick then five minutes later equalizes. Uh, you thought at first that Bayer might get out of, out of trouble, then got into deep trouble there again, then yeah, the draw is kind of so, 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 and so. So both um, Hertha and Bayer kind of not really moving forward. It was almost a duel for or against re relegation, gotta be said. Um, Hoffenheim, that was in the end easy, although there was a contentious penalty situation in the Leipzig, 3-0 over Dortmund, and fully deserved. And the goal by Soberschlein in the fourth for the film to make it 2-0, that was a pitch. I mean, this guy, I mean, I knew it from the Austrian Austria, he has a technique behind his shots that is just out of this world. Uh, Willy Orban scores the go-ahead goal, and Dortmund really had a hard time break, breaking them down. And it's so telling that on a day where Bayern drops points, the next challenger, Dortmund, cannot make it up. As you, at least you think it's the next, next, next challenger, but I think the next challengers are a little bit for for further down. First of Schalke get, get the first win, but I think it could well be Union and Freiburg who challenge Bayern this this summer because they are really, really well run teams. I cannot, I cannot overstate this, and they are actually teams fun, 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 fun to watch. You know how much I like Köln. I saw most of that game, and Union were totally. Totally um, the better team. They take a very earn, uh, early lead through uh, uh, Huber's own goal. Then they get a penalty, although I probably shouldn't have been being one, so it was probably uh, 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 all right in the 11th. The Cibaceo see saved. Then they score a goal uh, through Geraldo Becker, which also was, 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 was an offside. But it really has, has been said that uh, only Berlin, probably if this scoreline would have been 3 0, I think it would have been uh, the all right scoreline in this case. It was really Union laying down, down the market and saying, we are one of the best teams in the league. And at this moment, I would even argue, argue that um, outside of Bayern, they are. Freiburg Gladbach was a very entertaining first half with chances on both sides, but then Gladbach, something happened and it was, it got to say, Freiburg just couldn't find the breakthrough there. So yeah, uh, stays a nil-nil, so be it. Union Berlin ahead of Freiburg. Union Berlin, I think, for the first time ever, clear on top of the Bundesliga table. And you usually say after six uh, rounds, you kind of get a little bit of a um, feeling of where certain teams are. And Union Berlin and Freiburg are really, really good. Bayern München, I don't think at Hoffenheim, not quite yet, but Bayern, Hoffenheim and Dortmund are up on tw with 12 points. And maybe we'll see Mainz and Köln something in there. Gladbach, Bremen, I, see, I think Bremen will probably tend a little bit more towards the mean. I'm more curious about what Leipzig and Frankfurt will do because I think quality, quality wise, they have it in them to go up, up there. And Leverkusen and Wolfsburg should never be in that CAC situation they find themselves currently in. Uh, and you see, especially Leverkusen have the big red bar. Bayern also has a red bar already, yeah, <laughs> to be expected. Whereas Union Berlin and Freiburg are, of course, the two big uh, surprises of the season so far. And what surprise prices are. This is, these are, I cannot always say, these are true feel-good stories. Um, in the expected standings, I just to reiterate the point, Union Berlin at the moment finish in the Champions League. This is almost unthinkable. I mean, if you would have said to me this even a year or two years, years ago, I would not have thought that. At the moment, Union Berlin is uh, expected to finish in the, in the Champions League. I'm not saying it will, but it, 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 it's, it's, it's an unlikely uh, scenario with Freiburg also in the top six. Um, up come, coming around, I probably will uh, talk about the Bundesliga next week as well, because the last uh, week before we have the international break, we have the big Dortmund Schalke derby, although uh, I'm not sure about it. We have, you know, Leverkusen Bremen sounds big, is not big. So we have to look, Union Berlin is playing Wolf Wolfsburg, we have to look, Freiburg is playing against Hoffheim, and I think Freiburg is Hoffheim. That's the big one here. That's absolutely the big one. And we have also a little Bavarian derby between Augsburg and Bayern Munich. And Gladbach-Leipzig might be a sleeper. In any case, that's it from me 
from uh, the German speaking world. Uh, please let me know if you want to add anything uh, to the uh, to what I've been saying. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel for more videos like this and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. With that, have a wonderful day. Bye.